Gauteng MEC for Roads and Transport, uh, Jacob Mamabolo, in partnership with the Gauteng National Taxi Alliance and the South African National uh, Taxi Council, recently held a two-day provincial uh, taxi summit. Growing Gauteng through the modernization of the taxi industry, that of course was the theme under which the summit reflected, reviewed and tracked the implementation of the resolutions uh, that have been adopted during the previous uh, gatherings. We have in studio now Abnatsebe, he is uh, Santaco's Gauteng Deputy Chairperson and the Gauteng's MEC for Roads and Transport, Jacob Mamabolu, is here. A good afternoon to you, gentlemen. Thank you so much for coming through. Good afternoon and thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, and you say, I know you're fairly new in this department, but I just yeah. want to talk to you about the need for this summit. Well, um, th once more, thank you very much. The Provincial Taxi Summit was made absolutely necessary f by various factors. The first one is we have got to appreciate that the taxi industry accommodate about 67% of passengers or commuters across all modes of transport. Mm. So it means the workforce, the people that are critical to the economy <coughs> depend on taxis daily to go to work. So the tax industry carries our economy. So it was very much important that we prioritize it in early in this year <coughs> so that for the next five years, we could have the opportunity to completely turn around the taxi industry, modernize it, make sure that we can build an economy of our province centered around the efficiency of the taxi the industry. The reason I'm asking you that question is that we had a similar uh, Houghton Taxi Summit back in 2016, and all the stakeholders who participated in that summit were saying that Nothing happened. The resolutions that were taken then, that it's ever, you'll take me yeah. into your confidence about this, were never implemented. So how are we certain that this time around things will work out? Looking uh, at the commitment by the Houghton Department in that uh, issue like the MEC, that the member of is committed, starting, I think, it, the priority, it outlines that the first summit uh, it was like a talk show. No one was taking it forward. Maybe from both the industry and maybe from government. That's why this one we have to review and look at why did it not uh, happen. And so we are taking it forward and we are confident that uh, with the new administration, especially led by Dr. Mamabolo, uh, we will get somewhere. All right. Can I also add on you that? You can. One of the things that we did was to print the copies of all previous taxi summits. Mm. Yes. One of the questions we posed was, why is it that the previous resolutions were not implemented? And the answer that came from the taxi industry itself, and uh, Mr. Tsebe here can confirm that, was there was no mechanism of oversight and monitoring that was put in place to make sure that the resolutions were implemented. And that's different from this time because we have agreed that between the industry and ourselves, every month we will meet in a meeting convened by myself and the agenda will be purely what progress are we making because if, as I said, we continue to neglect the taxi industry, we are putting the economy of the province at risk. So it is very much important that together, and the other issue was also I sense some bit of confusion that the taxi industry was saying, uh, can government tell us why the, the resolutions were not implemented? Which means there was also confusion about whose role exactly. So it will seem people felt government must implement. No, no, this time we're saying the implementation resides with both of us equally. Yeah. Of course, as the MEC are convened. Yeah, the and we know that part of what the industry has <coughs> been complaining of is what they call unfair treatment by government uh, as compared to your uh, counterparts from the bus sector. Yes. So that issue was also raised uh, at the summit. Yes, and, and, and I think uh, it is very clear. Uh, it has been said in numerous times that uh, we need a subsidy uh, but remember, subsidy comes with a process. It's a process. You need to have 
uh, certain process assisted by government. And we agreed mm -hmm. that uh, Dr. Dr. Mabovol has already said that continuously every month we have meetings so that we are able to plan and have a proactive uh, action to say where are we heading to in terms of making sure that we get that subsidy, operating license issues, infrastructure. The issue of permits. That. I wanted to come to that particular yes. one because I know that it's been a very thorny one for the yes. province of Houting for the longest time. Sure. So what has been agreed uh, upon that one? Listen, there's, uh, remember the, the operating licenses, the first operating license was indefinite. And uh, now comes this one that is four or five years. And I think the uh, Premier also alluded on it at the summit uh, that uh, the lifespan of the permit uh, as Houghton Province, they want to look into that because it's very critical because uh, remember this is a family business. Uh, when I pass on, my family must we'll inherit. Take over. Yeah, so yeah. But so I understand you also want your special lanes dedicated to taxis, as much as we have special lanes dedicated to buses. And that the Well, the the issue raised earlier is the most critical one about um, issuance of operating permits, and I'd like to talk about that. Mm. The, the reason why, I, and, and whilst of course subsidy issue resides, it's a policy issue of national government, but for us in the province what is critical is the following. For as long as we don't know how many taxes do we have, who they are, the owners, the operators, basically data about the taxi industry. Because at the end of the day, if you talk subsidy, we must know. How many associations do they have? How many members are there? Mm -hmm. And if we were to look at funding, what in real rents and cents it comes down to. So the data about the taxi industry is almost not credible. Secondly, for as long as the taxi industry remains divided, there are high rates of violence mm -hmm. and problems of associations. And for as long as the taxi industry operates in an informalized way, in the way that it is running currently, the issue of the benefits it can get will continue to be a problem. So the decision we have made are very important too. One is that in the province, we are going to use technology to uh, build a new database that will follow the investigations and cleaning of data we are going to do on the existing number of taxes we have. And secondly, once we have, and on, of course we have also agreed that we need to appoint a, a retired judge yeah. to investigate the high rate of violence to stabilize the sector. And thirdly, we need to look at the associations themselves. So, and, and, and of course the tax industry has also made a clarion call, very powerful at the summit. Government help us to unite. And he was one of the leading champions with his colleagues of the call that we are stronger as the taxi industry when we are united, we are weak when we are divided. And building on that is, they also say, well, look, there's a lot of money and cash flowing in the taxi industry. If they are united, if there's stability, if there's data, they can even look at establishing a bank which will empower the tax industry. Participating in the value chains, the production of their cars, maintenance, tires, the whole thing, even transport infrastructure. But for as long as the sector operates informally, violence, divisions, and all those issues, it makes it difficult to empower the industry. That is why this summit, I believe, we have laid a very good basis to build a completely new powerful subsector, which is going to be critical to the economy with the decisions we have taken, but we need their unity, very much important. Let's go back to one important <coughs> issue you've just ma made mention of, LEC. Houting has seen an increased uh, violence uh, and murders among taxi operators themselves, as you said. So the issue of the appointment of a retired judge, talk to us about this and how soon will this be um, effected? So when, when, when Premier David Makura was at the summit, he made the announcement that we are going to appoint a retired judge to immediately to help us as a province get to the root cause of what is um, at the center of the rates, increased rate of murders that we're seeing and the violence. So there are factors that we, we, we can put on the table, but I think the, the appointment of the judge will give us accurate, reliable, credible data and facts about, okay, these are the issues. 
Um, one very critical question is, so about when this can be appointed, the Premier has indicated that this is an extremely urgent matter. I wouldn't want <coughs> to put a date on him, but I'm quite sure that before the end of August, as a provincial government, we will have announced, and that is going to be extremely important because it will give us all the nuts and bolts, the details mm. of what is bedeviling in the taxi industry, and using that information from the, from the activities of the retired judge, I can tell you, together with the taxi industry, we are even in a much more powerful position to say, how can we look at economic empowerment of the sector? For example, we have even agreed that uh, we need to establish the Houting uh, Taxi Academy. Academy. Yeah. This academy can only take place under conditions where people are free to go to school because for as long as there's violence, attacks mm -hmm. and all that, mm -hmm. it's going to make it difficult. I so wanted that this to talk to us about that academy. You and I had this discussion earlier. I don't know if you are aware and you see that uh, years back, uh, Santaco established uh, uh, the same academy. I think it's based in Velcom in the Free State, mm -hmm. where drivers were taken there to be given skills. So how different will this one be? And what happened to the one in Velcom, by the way? No, there are a number of challenges in the Velcom because remember if you take all provinces and you want to then take them to Velcom, it becomes a bit of a challenge. And we supported the Houting Academy. Is it still operational though the one in Velcom? Has there. it yielded results so far? Not, not exactly so far, but we are trying. We are working on it with Tita. Uh, and we, we, but in this instance, the Houting one, we think it will, it will help a lot. Mm. But what, yes. I, what exactly are you looking into with this academy? Uh, we had this discussion of A as well that yes. um, there is, I, I wouldn't call it quite a, a perception, but there is this mentality that taxi drivers are bad drivers. It's not all of them, but the majority yes. of them yes. on the road. Yes. My yes. experience yes. every morning when I take my son Absolutely. to school, I always come across one taxi driver who just uh, yeah. do not obey the, 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 the rules of the road. Yeah. Right. So this creates an impression that all taxi drivers are not equal to the task, they are unprofessional. How do you plan to bring back the credibility and, and perhaps the professionalism in, in, in this industry? So. What, what we are doing now, we are looking at the succession plan. What do we do? Because we cannot always depend on the present and not looking into the future. So our future is that the academy, let, let's take instances like in your Singapore, when you get the professional driving permit, you go through a, a lesson, you get into a class, you, you, you do customer care and all these other services that requires our passengers to enjoy, especially uh, in the environment that we are working into. So the one that we are working with now, it's, it's, it's a little bit difficult. That's why you were saying uh, there's this advertisement that we need uh, drivers with metric and so on and so on. So now, I think the academy will, will be equal to the task because for us to start thinking for the future is that we need something that will take us through so that we are able to vet our dri drivers so that they become professionals. Uh, you know, they can be able to get, for example, get into the car. You saw the MEC was in one taxi, talking to the passenger sitting in the right in front seat. So we need, them because the mindset for now, and as much as uh, you are saying, uh, taxi violence is one enemy, you, you know, we become our own enemies. And we cannot <coughs> continue uh, not talking about it. We have to stop this. It has to stop at certain level because we can't always think that we are the powerful uh, but we become powerless at the same time because mm. we are the same distractions that distract the taxi industry. So I think government assistance in this regard is going to assist us in terms of uh, working for the future and obviously bringing the new generation. Hence I'm talking a succession plan. The future yeah. drivers, they must be able to be equal to the task. Like you see, uh, the fourth industrial revolution, things are changing. Yeah. Yeah. So you need you need to change with well times. the times. Yes, yes, yeah, so but what, what skills are we looking into here? Uh, MEC, what, <coughs> are, what skills are we looking into bringing within the taxi industry so that it's not just about driving as in that this is here, the fourth industrial revolution is also here? So for us as government, there are two levels. But just before I go to, to the skill sets, there are many initiatives like the Velcom Academy that mm -hmm. <coughs> was established. There are others in other initiatives. Mm -hmm. But for as long as the taxi industry is alone there, and there's no government support, there's no partnership, closeness with government. Many of their initiatives don't work, like <coughs> economic activities. There are some that they've mentioned, they tried before, they never worked. 
But if we do it together with us as government taking the leadership and recognizing the importance of the tax industry to work. Now, there are two levels of training that we're looking at. One is that taxi leaders, I mean, the leaders in the tax industry running the associations at the top echelons. We need to empower them with management, business, leadership skills so that if they establish cooperatives and any other form of an empowerment activity, they understand uh, at their level what is efficiency, effectiveness, governance, but also if they want to invest in other sectors and activities in the, in the economy. It is going to be critical that they have the required levels of skills and capacity to run efficient and effective businesses. The second level is precisely the point we are raising. Attitude of drivers who interact with the people on a daily basis. Our, 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 our commuters have rights, they have dignity, they must be respected. Particularly women, uh, people with disability, the elderly. Just that courtesy and the respect of human rights, the values that our people expect, Ubuntu. We have got to teach the taxi drivers that, to be receptive to the people, to interact with the people. At taxi ranks, mm -hmm. when people arrive there, they should be well received by people that demonstrate knowledge of you know, human rights culture and just being humane. The other issue is driving practices, driving culture. Most of the accidents that happens, and remember that our roads have got a high rate of fatalities, and particularly the taxi industry. Most of these accidents could be avoided by things like advanced driving skills. To have a license does not necessarily mean you, you are good at driving. True. Okay? So, so, <clears throat> so you can have a, a, drive, a driver's license is a permission for you to drive. But the skill sets, the, the being technically functional mm. to drive, to be able to, I mean, you, there, there are people who are trained. I mean, um, I think the tax industry is one sector that doesn't train its drivers. So most of the accidents you can avoid with very good advanced driving skills. We have got to look at that. And of course, um, I think, and also just the condition of the car to appreciate mm. this car is used to uh, for passengers. So the car must be in a good condition. Yeah. Uh, the drivers themselves. That, uh, I think that there was uh, a, a taxi association around here in Gauteng. The drivers were uh, dressing up in formal gear. Was it here in Gauteng? Yes, yeah, I remember that. And yeah, well, even at the summit. Excited. Yeah. Even at the summit, the, I think almost 90% yeah. of the delegates were formal and I, but I was, that was just I was at the summit. Our, it yeah, wasn't at the text. No, no, even ABC. when I met with Santiago, <laughs> yeah. when I met with Santiago, they came formal dressed. Yeah. So I have seen and I was because they were saying, meeting the MEC. Yeah, isn't but, it? but let me we're also talking say, about no, no. seeing that a taxi rank where commuters, us as commuters, can get to experience yeah. the feeling, isn't it? Yeah. The, the point I'm just making is that also myself, uh. I also had a very like, and I blame myself for. For our surprise, I mean, because we all have these stereotypes yeah. about the taxi industry. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. so, so I think I think one of mm. the tragedies of our of our empowerment, economic empowerment processes post 1994, is that we have not looked at the taxi industry's position in the economy and have not you know, went with all our capacity to pull the tax industry. Yeah. There's a lot we did for the tax industry, tax recapitalization, recapitalization but, yeah. but there's a whole range of empowerment initiatives yeah. that I think if we did, okay. we will be a far now, much now, better. Now, I just uh, want to talk to you quickly process. about your, your budget vote. Yeah. I know you drove straight here uh, after delivering your budget vote. Okay. Where is uh, the chunk of money going to? The priorities that we have, um, uh, let me talk about, so three. Mm. One is that we are looking at the expansion of how train into particularly the townships. Um, so so the, the, the budget that we are looking at is to support the expansion of how train and to make it accessible to the people. But also we want to look at how can we further massify uh, the, the, and, and make sure that many people come into it. So the issue of uh, how train moving forward is going to be the key, key activity. We are looking also at bringing 
private sector injection of almost about 100 uh, billion rands. Mm. So this is a big issue for the Houting. So we're going to have an opportunity to bring to build a massive, massive new economy around expansion of Houting. And if they were united, more organized, we could also look at how we could partner, work together like they're doing in Centurion. Yeah. The other issue is the road network. Our road network requires expansion, it requires maintenance. So there are roads like what we call PWV59, uh, which seeks to relieve the road network around Gululis and also support a new terminal worth 2.5 billion built by Transnet mm -hmm. in and around N3 in Fort Lawrence. So road expansion the, the in, in Deep Sliot yeah. um, and in many so parts the of the province. So the infrastructure around okay. the road now, is quite critical. We, we and the bus subsidies, okay. that is also a big All issue. All right, we have to look at this. Yeah, yeah, many yeah. thanks for coming yeah. through to both of you and I suppose we uh, wait and see what happens going forward in terms of the implementations of all the recommendations and the resolutions taken at the summit. Yeah, thank you. We will right. also look at supporting the tax industry financially a little bit. Yeah, the yeah, association. Yeah, but did you say anything we'll about that, that today? Yeah. Or in Not the yet. Future? We go, we're going Not to be yet. looking at right. it. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. There, many, to, right. many thanks to my guest up Natsebe. He's Santakos Gauteng Deputy Chairperson. We also heard the MEC for um, Roads and Transport in Gauteng, Jacob Mapolo.